to do um, data driven testing so can you all open your excel sheets okay can you all open your excel sheets Okay, so enter this uh, heading. Okay, otherwise, I'll send this file for you guys. Okay, these are the inputs we are giving, right? First name, last name, telephone number, password, subscribe. So, these are the inputs we are giving, right? Password, right? So, what I'm doing, I'm creating a multiple sets of data, basically. Multiple accounts I'm creating. So, this is what data driven testing, right? How we are going to do data driven testing with the Selenium using test engine. So that's what I'm showing. How you can read, I'm covering two things here. Data driven testing we are doing, and how you can read this data, Excel data, to your test case. That's one thing. So quickly, I'll send this uh, file to you. Here we have option to send the file. I think um, screenshot file. So my computer, I don't know where I cut. Open cut. Automation, this is. Let me save it and save in that location. Okay, so that I saved it and uh, let me share it with you guys. You can also reuse the same. No need to so struggle. Let me share documents. Data. This yeah, please take it up, download it. So you need to where you need to place. We have a data package, right? In the so if it is not there, we'll create a data package. So where is the data? It's not there. So under SRC test resources. So let's go and create the one folder data folder. I'm going to create a data folder here. So create a new folder. New. So other folder. Here a folder. We have data folder. So just give data folder. Click on finish. Under this, you have to place this uh, Excel file. So how to navigate to here? You navigate to so this location, this location. Here you need to place the inside this. You have to place the Excel sheet. So my file is here. Open cart. So see, this is my path. I have to keep this path. Now see so that one. And here my file is here. So this one. Control X. So we go to here. Yeah, so exactly, I'll place it here. So basically, you place you are placing the file in the SRC test resources, the data folder. Now you go and refresh here. So you refresh your project. So you can see the Excel sheet. So I need to read this Excel sheet. 
to my path. So you have to give this path, this Excel sheet path. So, so we'll see how to read this. Okay, so once you are done, let me know. Then we'll proceed with the, how to read the data from Excel sheet. Okay, I'll give this path, okay? This path in my... So, from SRC, from here onwards, is enough. This path I'm going to give. In the constants. Where is our constants? Here, you go to the constants. Here I'll give my so path the file path, public, static, final, string, so test data, file path, equal to, just give that, like this. And you have to give user directory also, plus user directory. So user directory means the current working directory plus and the complete file path. So that's the one thing. And then public static, final, string, sheet name. So in this Excel sheet, what is the register uh, sheet name, okay? So what is that uh, register sheet name? So that path you need to provide. So that also we, we can give that. So what is the sheet name? So we need to provide it. Register. Sheet name. So what is the register sheet name we have given? Register we have given. So Excel sheet, you will see that. Sheet name on the bottom side. So register we have given. That's what we have given, right? Check that. Excel sheet. If you want to open this, you can see that. No, it's not showing. So you open normal Excel sheet, okay? Open with Excel sheet. You go there and open the Excel through Excel sheet only. Just double click on this normal Excel. You can see here register, register, login, products, all these things. Can you repeat the steps from downloading? Hmm? From downloading on. Sir. What downloading? In chart, you have pasted, no, sir. 
So you have to paste in the SRC test resources. Where you can find the SRC test? Did you create a data folder under yes, SRC sir. test resources? Created, sir. And then right click on that data mm. properties mm. and go to the location of the project that folder. Okay. There you paste the file. You already downloaded, right? That downloaded file, you paste it here. So that is what here in this location the file. So here the file is available. That is my workspace. Workspace inside my project folder name, then project folder SRC test resources data. Data folder inside this file is available. We place that. So the, these are the constraints all I'm putting here. So is it done, this, these two lines? Yes, sir. So now we need to go to, see my Excel data, any Excel data, if you want to read, you need to call this method. So what is the, this method written? See what type of data? Object to dimensional array. For this method, what we need to pass? What are the parameters you need to pass? Uh -huh. What are the parameters and, we need uh, to pass? Path and sheet name you have to give. So if you give the where the file is there, and then in that file, which sheet, from which sheet it has to read the data. So it will read and return the data to you. So that's what this method will do. So this is what type of method is this? Hmm? Two dimensional array. What type of method I am asking? Type of method. Many types of methods we have in Java. Static and static or non -static. non static. Then why are you thinking this? Non static. Not thinking something else you're asking. Any other, do you do you see any other type of methods in the Java? No. Then why are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> and then this is a non-static return type method. Non-static return type method, which returns a two-dimensional object. So which has a parameters. So that's what the non-static. How can you call this non-static method in another one package class, non-static method in another package class? First, we have the object reference dot class. So after that, object creation. First, you, you have to import. Okay, that's mm -hmm. Arshini told that first you have to import. And then we have to create, you object. create object for this Check class. Excel utils. Then object reference, object dot, reference dot this method. Mm -hmm. So let's go and do that. So same, I have to uh, no, do that. Okay. Any questions? This is the success test case we have written. Now, first I need to read the data, right? So after this, I, I need to log out also here. I need to log out also after this successful. We need to log out also. Log out. And you can come back uh, to the registration page. You click on uh, register, then you can come back to the, so this page. Otherwise, what I can do, I can keep this. Uh, before method, I will, I'll create one before method. At the rate before method. 
So what I'm going to do at that before method inside, I'll keep navigating to this registration page. So it's a common for both, right? All the methods. And I have to log out also. Where the logout will be there, my account page, it will be there. So did we identify my account page logout? Sure. But I, if not, we have to identify that. So before method you write first. So import public. So wide setup. Precondition to test. Precondition to test. So we should not say precondition so that you can say. Setup also fine by best suits, setup only, but fine. Okay, it's fine. So what you can do, you can I'll put this. I need to do every time this also. This is the common code. The common code should go to the every test method before what you want. First, you will navigate to this, this also. Where is the navigation we kept here, right? This is the one. This should come here. So that's it. Control Shift Format. Control Shift F. So automatically code will format. See now what will happen? So any test method execution before first this will execute. So before class will execute. Then where it will go? Next way, which annotation method will execute? Before class after. At the rate before method. Before method. At the rate before method will execute. So this before method, first this will call. So what this will do? Log dot info. So we get to registration page. Okay. Every time this test method execution before first this entire code will execute. Over. And after this test method, so you I want to log out here. My it is log. So you check is uh, logout exist. If is logout exist, what you need to do? Then you can uh, so do the logout. So that you need to check. How can we check that? That we need to check, right? Is logout exist or not? So that is on the account space. Uh, so we have to check that. Is logout exist? How do you know? exist or not. So write that, write that. So go to logout page, uh, account page first. So this account is how to navigate to account page. See that just control, you press the control and click. Uh, so click on this and it will take you to the account page. That's easy. You don't need to again, you know, uh, click here and going there. So directly we land here. So now I want to so identify whether logout is there or not. So it is a link, all our links, right? So just do the links. So pages first we need to identify that okay, we don't have uh, um, the website is not the right website. So will it log in for us? Um, let me try my my credential will work on it. We registered in another. Log because um, we didn't register here, right? That's why. 
Okay, so that we'll add later. Okay, log out we'll add later. Otherwise, okay. So let's keep this and continue. You uh, know, uh, writing the code for the. So this data driven testing how to do okay data driven testing how to do so my test method is ended here then i'll write another test method so what is this test method is doing so this test method will do whether so you should be able to register multiple accounts that is what we are doing how to register uh, so let's do that I want to parameterize this. I want to parameterize this. So public so wide do create more accounts test. So what are the parameters we need to provide for this method? In the Excel sheet, what are all the columns are there? Each column name is the parameter here. What are Spend all the columns? First name, last name, uh, telephone, email. Last name. Last name. Last name. Telephone. Email. Email. Email also, right? String email. So we didn't give email there? A password, I think, uh, instead of password, email has to be there. Yeah. First name, last name, telephone. First name, last name, telephone, password, subscribe. Yeah. So we have to Actually, give, in the uh, password field, you gave email. So. Uh, password also password. there, right? Password also there. So we have to give email also. So one extra. So in the Excel sheet, you include that. String email also. String telephone, comma, subscribe. String. Subscribe and string subscribe. So these are the parameters we have to give. So these are all the parameters we have to give. So add the email also. So email is a mandatory, right? Email also you need to add. So Excel sheet you modify. So make sure you that is provided. Email is uh, important. So okay, email we are uh, we are going to generate that. So uh, even if you generate also you need right. You have to give that. So even if you generate also, you have to give that email value. Mm, randomly you need to generate. So randomly you generate and you have to supply. So how to generate random email? We generated already. We have a method, right? Directly. Yes, sir. Yes. You will call that method and give that value. So take a variable and you will pass that in. But in the Excel sheet, uh, so do we need to read from Excel sheet? Not required. So you can, you can create a method. That method you can pass. Uh, so that method will return directly. That method you can pass it here as a when you when you call the so while calling the method, you can give the value. So that also you can do. That. We have included the emails in, actually in the Excel under password yeah. column. Mm, but email, if you include so we need to generate randomly, right? So okay, okay. you are giving your own email. Uh, yeah, that uh, that also works. That also works. Uh, I'm thinking I want, I'm generating a random email, right? Already here. Okay. The same concept I will use, this one. This concept I will use. Otherwise, I'll create a method here, it's get random email. 
and I'll uh, no, return that. So I'll write a method. So I'll remodify this also. What I can do, I'll uh, just remodify this. So I'll create a small method. Private string get random email. So return. That's it. So just call this method. Where is that email? Replace the here. That's it. Simple. See, create another method. That method you are calling in another method. So the same I will pass here also. While calling the method, I'll call, I'll give the method name directly. So wherever you are uh, calling this email, the same you will call, right, this code. So you will call basically this one, these things. Values you are getting from the Excel sheet. So call one by one. So call, I'll delete that. But what you need to do, you should not try a store here. Okay, you should not store. You have to use this F name. Okay, F name you have to use. So this F name you have to use. Even this L name you have to use here. And email. So what you can do, email you can just give the method directly. If you want, you can keep it, not a problem. So that email you can pass it. Then this one you should not use you should use the the telephone telephone here you don't need this right already so that email what are the this parameter value i'm passing using this one assigning to this parameter that parameter value i'm passing here so that's it and uh, telephone we passed and then what is the next one? Password. So the password uh, we are going to get from the, again, you have to give the same value, right? It's the same value. So password, you will give PWD. So just give the PWD. Why it is giving error? PWD, set telephone, set password. Let confirm password, okay. Where is this? Add throws declaration, okay. Okay. So password also done. And uh, subscribe, I need to pass instead of. Yes, I need to pass what? The parameter name. Subscribe. And pass whatever the subscribe is there in the Excel sheet that will come here. Checkbox continue and this one. So that's it. So this is the code it will create, and three times it will how many sets of data is there in the Excel sheet that will repeat. So that's the this one. But uh, so this is the how you can uh, create the accounts. But from where it takes this value, you have to create a data provider. Let's go and create the data provider. So I need to read Excel data and I'll store in the data provider annotation. annotation. So data provider. So public. So it returns an object to two-dimensional value. So reg test data. So data provider you import. And then, so you can object to dimensional, right? So data equal to new Excel utils 
of so dot get test data so import this import then dot get test data and we can pass constants dot register so what is that constants what is the file path we are given path test data file path huh? we are given test data file path and then second one sheet so sheet also we are given constant start sheet sheet name so everything is abstracted see can you see everything is abstracted add throws declaration and return the data So return two times letter. So you have to, you are reading from Excel sheet and storing in the two times letter. I am returning that. So this you have to map to the test data, your test method. How you can map to the test method? You just, how can you map a test method and data provider? What is the keyword you need to use? Hmm? How can you map a data provider and add the test method? So data provider keyword. That's what I was telling, read, read. If you don't read, it doesn't work out, right? So you give the method name, this method name. So then it will understand. So from where? So from where you will get this, this data is there in this uh, two-dimensional object array. And uh, so every time this test method will go and pick the data from this data provider and stores all the values from Excel sheet and it will get it and uh, replace it here. So that is what is happening. Okay. Any questions? That's how to do a data-driven testing. So we can't run it today, right? Otherwise we can. Yeah, we cannot run it. Maybe you can try uh, running uh, so this uh, demo opencard.com. So we'll try that. Okay. We'll uh, just replace that. Let's let's do that. Okay. Okay. So config that properties. I'll just put this I'll comment out. And then I'll uh, use the other one. Now to comment this. So hash symbol we put it. So demo dot this one right. This one. Let's try it. So let's run this. Okay. Where is that? Form.xml. Just um, I went clean. Stop. Based on this website, you have to so take care of the 
fields. What are the fields that are available? I think uh, the locators also changing, I think. That's why it's not identifying. OP is itself a failure. So trying. Here we have open card, right? The other place it was a uh, different. Uh, we I think your store your, was your store, yeah. Your store, so your store. is looking for that. So that's why if you give a uh, basically a text, that's a problem. You said uh, no three models or something changes. Again, you have to modify in your text. That's why we have to use always avoiding uh, using the text. Text any time might change. And, uh, let's see uh, how it goes. So we'll add some more uh, test cases or code we'll add for the pages. Uh, what page we can add? Uh, so search, we already added, right? Search fields, so we added, but we have to find the search. I think we can work on search. So tomorrow we'll, uh, I'll show you locally in your lo so local machine how to install this open cart application so that it will be easy for you. You can bring up and you can uh, work on that. We don't need to depend on other persons. Okay, uh, that's uh, not working. I think it's failed. So all are failing. So real is not shared, but um, so at least it should go here. I don't know why it is not going here also. Okay, so I uh, I don't want to waste time here. Uh, meanwhile, I'll install, I'll tell you about Git also. At least we'll uh, finish that Git part. So Git and GitHub will uh, finish another 15 minutes we have. So Git we need to learn, Git and GitHub. So we'll do this, uh, you know, install, uh, running everything tomorrow. So let's do that, Git and GitHub. Right, how, how to uh, install Git and GitHub means what? So Git is a version control tool. So if you go and see our blog, you can. Um, So if you see, if we go to, you can see here Git. So we need to install Git on our local machines. So what is a Git? GitHub and SCM and uh, so what is mean by all these keywords? We should understand these keywords. So Git is a version control tool. Basically, you can manage your code, your entire project code. That's what the version control tool, if anybody asks, what is your version control tool? You have to answer Git. And what is GitHub? GitHub is a, a cloud web application. So where you can store all your code, basically all your project code, your company's project, right? The project code will store in the GitHub. So it will store in the GitHub. Once it is stored in the GitHub, you need to bring that code to your local machine. How can you bring that to your local machine? So that is what this, uh, how you can, so bring that to your local machine. You work it, you develop the code, right? You will develop the code, you will modify the code. You will write a new classes. 
and uh, that code again you have to place it in the github so how you will interact with this that interaction you can do with the git tool that is called version control tool so some of the terminologies let's go and understand a cm uh, cm means configuration management so managing the configurations of all your project okay scm stands for source code management so it is integral part of your project in the it world and these are the, these are the keywords uh, regularly we use uh, source code management tool all this what are the top source code management tools so you have ms team foundation server tfs uh, this one I, I never hear this gitlab bitbucket server subversion git and github so mostly people are using this git and github and also gitlab is uh, very famous nowadays continuous integration continuous delivery that is what ci cd means so is an integral part of gitlab so automatically we have a integration and delivery of the code to different environments in the gitlab so why do you use version control systems the collaboration between the team members so we can collaborate with the different team members that's the one main advantage of version control systems storing versions your same file you are modifying multiple times so every version will be recorded with a one id commit id we call that so for example this current version you made that is not working the build is failing you can restore it back to previous version that's a restoring the to the previous version also you can do with uh, this version control systems so you can understand what is happening in the project so who are all merging the code and what they merged you can monitor everything here you can take the backup also so this all can be done with a version control system so the version control system is a git and github we are going to use or you can use Bitbucket or you can use GitLab. So these are the three. And a subversion is a very old one. Nowadays, nobody using. So mainly people will use Git and GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket server. These are the main focus ones nowadays. All are similar. So GitHub, Bitbucket to GitLab, all will store the code. So your project code will store somewhere that is the this uh, git and github and uh, so git initially developed by linus torvalds that is called a version control system git is a version control system so that you can manage your source code history you can manage it's a free and open source uh, version control tool git is a tool git is a version control tool and what is GitHub? GitHub is a cloud-based hosting service that uh, lets you manage all your Git repositories. Git repositories means the code, the code stories. That is where you will store the code in the GitHub. So GitHub is used to do code reviews and maintain documentation. GitHub is used for collaboration between team members. So that's it. But interacting between your github and to the local machines you will use this git tool so why git we need to use versioning of a file and uh, tracking changes and owner changes who modified who is changing you can track each and every commit enables the team to collaborate and work efficiently that purpose you will use git why you need a git so different terminals we should understand what is a repository, what is clone, commit, push, pull request, fork, branching, fetch, merge. So these are the terminologies we should be very clear. So these terminologies, what is a repository? So as I mentioned already, a storage area of your workplace, storage area of your project code that is called repository what is mean by repository storage area for a project code 
application code that is called a repository. So what is clone? Clone is basically copies, right? Copying the repository that sit on the developer's computer instead of server elsewhere. So if you clone this repository, that will come and sit on your, your machine. That's a clone command we are going to use. Git clone the command. There are a lot of commands. Git clone the repository URL. This repository has a, some URL. That URL you will provide and it will clone to your local machine. Clone means copying to your local machine. All the code will copy it to your local machine. So that means remote code you are copying into your local machine. That's the clone. And commit. Commit means Whatever the changes you make in your files will come under commit. That is what commit means. Whatever the files you modify. So all the files, the modified files comes under commit only. Every change is saved under a particular name or ID, which is also called a revision or commit ID we call that. So then push. Push means pushing the Basically, sending your committed changes to a remote repository such as github.com. You are pushing from your local machine to github.com. That is called push. So, pull request. So, if you have made changes in the code to show other collaborators, that means other people also want to see your code changes, you will raise a PR. PR means pull request. Pull request you will raise. So, that if you give that pull request number, all your new changes that will be shown in the, so this PR. So they will review, uh, how they will review is based on the PR only. So they will open the link, this is basically a link. So it will be open and they will review and if they, any comments are there, they will provide the comments there. So four keys, another one, it is a copy of others repository on your account. So four keys, just copying others repository. For example, I have my own repository. You can fork my repository on your account. That is called forking. So branching, branching is nothing but when you extract a portion or section of code from main repository, so all the code of the remote repository code, you will bring it to branch. So you can work independently with this branching concept. So it won't disturb anybody. So you can make any changes. All your changes will be under this branch. So fetch. Fetching is nothing but getting the latest changes from a repository without merging them into uh, remote repository. So basically you're fetching means you're bringing, you're getting the latest changes from other uh, repository, uh, from other branch that is called fetch. So merge means merging takes the changes from one branch and applies them into another branch. So for example, you have one branch, I have my branch. You need my code. How you can work independently, we are working. So you can take my branch so you can call git merge your branch name you give, uh, my branch name. So automatically my code will come into your branch. So you are merging my branch code into your branch. That is called merge code you will use. So these are all the commands. So git commands, uh, so we'll do that. So let's go and do the quick installation. Can you all, uh, so go to this URL and download the git and install very simple installations. These are, it doesn't take much time, okay? So see, download for Windows. So I'm giving here. Can you send the year also in the chat? Yeah, that's it. So click here to download. If you are a Windows 64 bit Git, you have to use use this. So 64 bit Git for Windows setup. You can if Mac people are there, so Mac is it's a separate. 
Anybody is there for Mac? You are not using Mac? Okay, so you can just click on Windows, this one. Okay, this exe file, just click on that exe file, install it. So I already installed, so I don't need to install again. So anybody wants to share, share, I'll get there. The installation of uh, Git. Can I share? Or... Yeah, for once. You downloaded it? Yeah. So click an arrow mark. Open. Open. Yes. 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 All next one. That's it. So very simple installation. So this one. And it will learn. Uh, how can you find out whether a Git is installed or not? You right click on anywhere. Then it will show Git bash or oh, something like that. So you go to the desktop and just right click and you, know, you can see anywhere. Just right click any folder inside. You can see the, go to your desktop. Anywhere, just right click. So show more options. So you can see there is a git bash here get GUI here. That's the indication you have successfully installed the git. Finish it. And tomorrow I will uh, show you with our own. I'll uh, so I'll post in our uh, no, uh, blog how to set up your local uh, environment for testing so that it will be easy so we don't want to depend on others okay so tomorrow we'll continue